Turners. I'm Captain Eddie Castellan. Welcome to my shop. Got to fix the old brain cover here. This is the 2nd of March, 2018. And here in New Orleans, we've had a couple of 84, 85 degree days lately. And then I'm looking at the weather just now on the East Coast is getting bombarded with a snowstorm. A what storm? Snowstorm? Whoa! So you might be watching me a little bit here while you're waiting to get back out into the shop. So let me give you a project. I'm going to make a tool handle. I know. Okay. I'll explain more, but you know the drill once we get started, right? You gotta watch. Here at Big Eye Productions, we sell carbide cutters. We've got about 10 or 12 shapes. Uh, for 3 8 inch bars, for half inch bars. We also have the bars. We have templates. Longworth. Uh, we got a handful of stuff. It's all on our website. Here's the website. www.eddiecastellan.com Not extremely creative. I work with what I had. But you guys go out and you make tools that you can use in your wood shop. And I've been telling folks for years, I've been selling the bars and the cutters. We have a guy who's making our own bars, buying cutters. We have the cheapest cutter price on the planet. That's just it. Um, excuse me. And you've never heard that in an advertising before because there's not a lot of people that can say that. I got the hiccups, okay? Cheapest price on the planet because we work with you, the wood turners. And it is me and Mama who run the place. Well, she runs the place. I'm just here as a resident wood turner. All right. Now, I'm coming back off of a stroke in a, a cup of three and a half years of absence out of the shot. We're getting back in. We're making things. We're going to do some things. Some things are going to be unique and strange and otherwise weird. Uh, but then there are items that are going to be good projects for you. Every one of them, the goal is to teach you something about using your tools. I can't teach you how to do my wood turning. I can show you what I've done. I'm not going to brag on it, but I want you to learn how to use your tools so you get the better turning. And one of the things is, how do you make a tool handle? When I go for a tool in my shop, and, and look, I'm a carbide master, okay? We, we sell carbide tools. We have all kinds of things. But if I go to my shop and look for something to turn with, and I did this just the other day, first thing I look for is right here. This is my weapon of choice. What is it? It is a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, deep fluted, you can't see that from there, deep fluted and it's ground with an Ellsworth Avacera grind. It's a combination of two grinds. David Ellsworth put the English grind out there 25 plus years ago and everybody loved them with a deep fluted gouge and they really work great. They do. I don't have anything that beats them. A lot of people talk, I even make noise sometimes, but it's hard to beat them. Well, when I got it home, when I, well, I'm sorry, I bought my first one. It came unhandled from Crafts or one of these other places. Then I bought one at D-Way Tools at one of the trade shows, like SWAT. SWAT's coming up August 24, 25, and 26 in Waco, Texas. And it is the funnest wood turning symposium in the entire world, hands down. But that's SWAT, SWATTurners.com. S-W-A-T-U-R-N-E-R-S dot com. Look them up. Look them up. Hope to see you there. But I brought it home. I needed a handle. Well, I had already bought a piece of Coca Bolo when we were at the show. Nice chunk of Coca Bolo. Coca Bolo. Really was. So I came home and I turned that into a handle. Uh, my handle. You're going to give me. You throw the number of thing at me. Okay. My handles. 13 inches overall. It's 13 inches overall for the handle. Works really well for me because I don't do a lot of get way back and reach out to touch things. I've got some other tools for that and they're, they're ground differently and they work differently. But when I gotta get up close and personal and do some fine ta detailing, this is my weapon of choice and it works best for me. Now, how do we make this handle? You're going to tell me you're not my very much of a wood turner. All right, that's the problem. I can live with that. I'm going to send you down to the hardware store, and I want you to get this right here. 
This is made by Tree R U P E R Trooper. It is a handle for a. Let me get this right. It's on here someplace. It's a handle for a shovel. I thought that label that was on the label. Oh, ash bent hollow back shovel handle. I bought it at Lowe's. In the garden section where they have all the shovels and rakes and all that, they have handles. What I want you to see, and I might have shown this before, if you can see and appreciate the grain on that piece. It's a good, straight, true grain piece. Good and straight. No knots, no pins, no warping, nothing else that seasons. It's out there. This is the best item to start with when you're making a tool handle. And when you make them, well, send me a picture of what you made. Because this is a challenge for a lot of guys. And I want them to understand that this is relatively simple to do. It already comes knobbed off on one end. All you got to do is clean it up. They put staples in it out like nobody ever puts their hand on the end of it. But I'll clean that up and sand it off and put some, some shine juice on it. But I'm going to cut it to 13 inches long. And I'm going to mount it on a lathe and make ourselves a handle with other parts I got from the hardware store. On the corner, the Ace Hardware. Yep, that's the place. Just so we're all playing by the same rules, I bought one handle. It cost me about $7.85. Where did you get that number from? All right. I've got the 13-inch handle blank. I've got about a 9-inch handle blank. Ha, ha, ha. You stay tuned for that one. And then I still have a piece where I can get another 13-inch blank out of, and i got some leftovers here. So I can get a pretty good bit out of one handle. And I'm going to use every bit of this in the shop in the next couple of days just to show you all the things you can make. This one, that's a whole nother video. You're going to like this one. So, we're going to put that together. Let's get it mounted on the lathe. Got it? Got it. Got it. You with me? You with me? You with me? Fourth time. We're going to, we're going to get this right. Because now I opened up a cabin and I saw the clamp I wanted. And a few minutes later I saw the drill bit I think I want. But we're going to go ahead with this. This is being held and when I was a cabinet maker this was called a cabinet clamp. It's made by Jorgens. You see it? But they don't come with that nice. See that hole in the middle? They don't come that way. They come nice and smooth and they're awesome clamp. Double screws with Wimpy used to call it. Now why is that hole there? Because I can hold the round piece and it won't move. So I can have several holes. And I got this one 45, 50 years ago. And I've got three or four been in the shop. And I love to do things like this with them because there's nothing else I have that'll do this. So now I have it. I'm under power. I got three eighths inch pin in. I'm gonna go right down the middle of my shaft. Now if I had the quarter inch by 18 inch, I could easily have done this on the weight. And I would change to a longer bit, just a pug bit. But I'm going to end up with a hole. Center off in this piece that I can work with. That is what we're going to hold it in. Hold it in a hole. Alright, hey, i got something going here. Distance, I want to show you what I've got done. I put it in the stipe center. A stipe center is a pointed center with little teeth on it. You can use your regular center, that's fine. This is going to do less damage to the end of the handle, which I got to clean up anyway. So, hey, here and there. Then the other part, I put my soft touch into that hole. And I have a piece spinning here. See? It's fairly true. Might not be exact, but it's okay for me. And I'm sure it'll be okay for you. Now I have it here. I'm going to go ahead and get ready to put the fitting on the end of it. The fit 
in order to give this handle some stability or strength I'm going to do two things number one when I put the bar in there I'm going to put epoxy in the bottom of the hole then I'm going to push my bar in and it's going to push the epoxy out why didn't I put it on top of the hole think about it I want it bound down in the middle then I want to put a furrow on it now that's a good looking furrow isn't it yeah you know what that is I went down the street to the Ace Hardware store and I got a coupler nut made for plumbing if I can just figure out how to get it out of the bag it is a 7 8 inch compression nut that's it right here okay it's in the plumbing department we're going to turn this into this on a wood lathe you see it see it see it see it got it got it got it it's going to really make a difference keep this from cracking and splitting under pressure now let's get to sizing it so we're all playing on a fair field no rings no watches no jewelry I'm wearing my safety glasses I'll put on my shield in a minute I'm going to measure this and see what I need for a socket or for a fitting to go on there. That's that's just a, a, a in out caliper. Okay, you can measure it, and I guess when it may when you measure it out, if you did it in inches and feet, it'd come out to be just about exactly one inch. I'm going to put a fitting on the end of this, a groove that's that dimension right there, one inch. It's going to be about that long. You see it? That's an exact measurement. Then we're going to put that on and continue turning. I moved my tail stock and didn't check it. That was a major faux pas. Really was. I could have got hurt if, it, if that thing came loose. Check your settings again. Now I'm up there. I'm going to bring the pressure up on the headstock a little bit more. Now the questions are coming. Eddie, why don't you just use your gouge? Well, I hadn't put a handle on it yet. But if I had put a handle on it, I had the gouge, I'd go in like this. Okay. Then I stop the lathe. This is my gauge. And look at it. I still got to move about an eighth of an inch. Okay that's automatic now that moved just now so it's not the right setting anymore and I tore this up a little bit when I hit it with the, the gate the gouge which means I can fix it right now I'm gonna go in here and clean this up I don't know if I said it, but the gauge moved and I didn't have a proof to go back and check it because it looks like it's the right size. But it moved out a little bit and I overcompensated. So it's a little loose. What am I going to do? Well, number one, I'm going to go ahead and run it back a little bit, a little bit thicker. I want to nose off some of the beginning of it. And that's going to get me to where I want to be. So if you're with me, I'm living through the screw ups, but we're going to get there. it back up but I want you to see something you see the, the nut the coupling nut right there it's going to ride there so it's easy for me to fit on there when I get to where it's going to be again 
back in with my little detail. By what I did, that should work. I'm pretty sure that we have it at the right dimension. I'll take it off the, the, the slide. I'm going to show you this. This is nut. It's going to go right on there and just a smooth, tight fit. And I have a little bit of the crown coming through. And that helps me just in general, okay? Now, this could be ready. This could be ready. And because, in the essence of time of getting things done, I'm not going to continue on beyond this very much. I'm going to show you that this is ready. I can put my epoxy in the bottom and put my bar in and I have a finished tool and I'm ready to work. This will never impact me. If I want to make it look nice, I could epoxy this on right now, put it back in there, spin it again and knock those corners off and polish that. That takes a little bit of the copper away, but it's okay. But in essence, I, I, well, let me, let me stop. Here's the deal. We have to make a, a tool handle. Got to adjust the camera again. Okay, now, when it happened a few minutes ago and I went, oh, it hurt. I took a fall coming out here the other day and banged up my leg. Just now, I hit it on the side of the tripod. Really pissed it off. And that's a technical term. Standing up is not ha happy right now, but it get better. But I have the handle. It's made out of a piece of a sh shovel handle from Lowe's. I want to clean this up and sand it off and then seal it because that's where my hand's going to be at. This then I'm going to epoxy this back in place. And oh yeah, that furrow cost me $1.49 at the hardware store. That's this part, $1.49. So I'm going to put that on. Then I'm going to take my drill bit and re-drill that center to be at least three inches deep for a round bar. Then what do I do? I've got the bar around here someplace. I want to knock the corners off a little bit with a belt sander. Put the epoxy in there. I like that 15 minute epoxy you can get from Penn State Industries. It's very versatile. It doesn't work so fast you'll be scared to get done with it. And it sets up really nice. It's a good product. Don't get the five minute. There's no win there. You're not going to use this till tomorrow anyway. So I want epoxy, put the epoxy, put the handle, put the tool in, clean it all off, wipe it down real good, and let it cure. Yes, epoxy's cure. So I'm going to let it cure for a little bit, and then it's going to be ready. So there you have it. We went from a shovel handle to a tool handle. And hopefully that will help you out when you get out in the shop. It will help me out because I got a tool. I have a, a reason I didn't mess with this too much. I found another 3 8 gouge up there on the shelf. I'm going to put me another one together with a little bit different grind than the end for getting in the bottom. Well, I'll have to show you when we get there. All right? I will. I will show you because you're right here with me. Captain Eddie Castellan. And we're making shavings. Oh, by the way, if you got a picture of some of your work, you can email it to uh, this address right here. C-A-P-N Eddie Castellan at gmail.com. Send it to that one. Send me a photograph of the work you've done. Tell me I can use it. And I'll add it right about here. In fact, this is a good spot for me to show you a nice pen that Ron Radley did, and he sent it to me. This is nice. Ron, this is a beautiful pen. This is a Celtic knot. Um, and I like the layering. I, I tell you what, we'll have to get together one day and talk about those knots. They're relatively easy to do, but you got to plan them out. Yeah, I know. you got to plan them out. The jig is regu regulatively, relative, regulatively, relatively easy to make, easy to maintain, and easy to use. All it takes is a little bit of uh, gray matter. I got less than I had before, but I can get it done. So that's it. I'm in the shop making shavings. See you back again real soon.